Hello again. This is Jeff Robertson with Penton Audio and Atisa Electronics. This is a tutorial video on how to map and control any element or preset through your control inputs. Uh, we are going to be using the TTL Logic inputs for this one, but the analog controls are extremely similar. So what I have here is just a really quick design that I pulled out of my demo. And what I want to do is I want to set a control input number one and when I switch it I want to switch between my two presets which I've already added and named up here um, and what I'm doing with these presets is through this little 4x4 standard mixer when I'm in normal mode I want input one to go to output one two to two three to three four to four respectively when I go to my switched mode or when I push a button or make a contact closure I want all these to reverse and I want one to go to four and I want two to go to three three to go to two and four to go to one respectively first thing I want to do real quick is make sure I map these to my presets so when I do switch my presets I'm actually doing the control functions that I want I could go in here and I could go to every element and right click and map it to um, presets if I wanted that way like is in the tutorial video for preset setups easy way to do it is I just go to the whole module right click on it go down to sub presets and say add to all so now if I had 10 or 16 sub presets here, I would just added all the elements within this module to all my presets. But I only have two of them, so that's an easy way to go. Now what I want to do is, in my normal mode, this is what I want it to look like. Okay, that's fine. I can make any level adjustments I wanted, whatever. And so what I need to do is go up here, highlight this, and say preset save. And we're saved. Now let's go to the switched preset, and I will make my changes. Uh, like I said, we just wanted to mirror image of that there you go that's what I want it to look like when I go to switched so I will do sub preset save and there we are now just to verify that I've actually mapped my sub presets right let's go to normal and we'll click over here to load and hopefully these will switch back to the other way there they go and let me pull up my switched and click on load and there you go that's the way that you would manually switch your sub presets or master presets through the PC GUI uh, that you set up on your monitor window if you like all right, so we know all that's working, so that's good. Now, how do we map this to a button on the control inputs? Well, it's fairly simple. The first thing we need to do is create an event. An event is any kind of control input. Anything that we're doing through third party or analog ins or outs or schedule, that is an event to the system. So we have to go and view all the events and add events. So I go to the view, and we go down here to event management. Now, if you're doing a lot of analog or front panel controls or whatever, you spend a lot of time in the event management. So, first thing we need to do is figure out how many events will I need. Well, I know I need at least one to switch it, switch preset mode, and I need a second one to switch it back. Even though I've got one button or one control input, it's two events. One to go high, one to go low. So, I just click the add once, and I'll click it twice. Uh, to make it easier for me when I'm editing, I like to name them right away. That way, when I'm working throughout it, and you'll see later, it makes a lot of sense, and it's easy to keep track. So my first one, I'm going to say I'm going to switched mode. And on my second one, I'll say I'm going back to normal mode. And it doesn't matter the order as long as you know which one's doing which. Here's your control type. This is a drop-down window. These are the possible controls you could do uh, with this event. I could change a master preset, change a sub preset. We could do any kind of element adjustment, a selector switch. If it's analog, you know, you got your trim pots or whatever, your 10K pots, selector buttons, whatever. I could do a TTL logic output, or you can easily use it for a stop event if you have a continuing event that keeps going, like a message playing or whatever, forever until you let go of a button or a trigger. Say, like from a fire alarm, weather alert, or security panel, you would actually have the second event to say, I want to stop playing this or stop that event. So that's what stop event means. So, but we're just changing presets. So there's a sub preset, and we're changing this sub preset. There you go. This other column right here is third party control. This is where you would enable and set up your third party serial commands from like your Crestron or AMX system or your VIDI systems, as well as we could take third party commands for some of our PoE uh, smart devices via the TCP IP Ethernet port. So that's on another tutorial video, so we'll skip that for now. Here are your two logic high or logic lows and these are your control input operators they can either be high or low 
A good way to think of it, at least I think about it, is when the control input goes low, that means you complete the circuit and the impedance and ohms go low. Basically, a dead short is zero ohm. And if the logic goes high, then that means you open the circuit, which means is basically it's infinite amount of ohms. So basically, low means you complete the circuit. Logic in high means you open the circuit up. What we want to say is when I push my button or you get a contact closure from expansion curtains or room combining or whatever you need, whatever you want to do to trigger this mixer to switch its mode, I want it to go low because I'm going to actually make that circuit. So what I need to do is I click on the low and these are all my eight analog or TTL logic inputs. Remember the TTLs are one through eight, the analogs are nine through 16. If I made all 16 control inputs and configuration TTL logic, you would see 16 options right here. So I want to do it on one. So all I did was enable one and I save it. Whenever control input one goes low because I complete the circuit with a push button or short, it is going to change the sub preset. Now, now when I go normal, I just want the opposite of this to happen. So if I release the button or release the circuit, that logic input is going to go high. So at this point, I say it's, it's going to be on one as well. If control input one is low, I go to this preset. Logic input one goes high or the button or low is released and it goes back high. It's the only two states it could be in. I also change the sub preset. How do I know which sub preset that I want to change? Well, that is in the mount column. Now, I just highlight it. And now since I'm doing changing sub presets, when I say mount, it's going to bring me all the sub presets that I've saved and named up in my design. And I only have two to make it easy. Whenever this goes high, uh, low with a contact closure, I want it to go to preset number two, which is the switch preset. And I click OK. The reason you see one is that's how many actual activities or actions is being done when this happens. So it's only mounting one because of one action. Now, when this control input number one goes back high or the circuit opens up, I want to go back to normal. So that's the preset I want it to flip back to. So there you go. And they are all done. So I can clear out of here. Now, all I need to do is go back and compile, which I did. And we will go back and store. And we're hardware booting. So if we want to see how this works, all I need to do is pull this up. Remember, I'm live with the machine now. I can manually go to normal and load it in there, and you can see I switch back to normal. Now, and this is the state it's in. I'm going to leave my cursor right there, and I've got just a pair of wires hooked up on my control input one and ground, and I'm just going to short the wires, and hopefully we'll switch over to the switch. So I'm going to short these in three, two, one. There you go. Um, I'm holding them together, and I am going to break the connection or open up the circuit or Reset my switch at three, two, one. Open back up. Short it. Open it back up. There you go. It's that easy. That's how you can change your sub presets with a control input. Now, you can also, through your control input, trigger other elements like selector switches or whatever. It doesn't have to be a preset. TTL logic. And just show you how you can use it to trigger like a message play or any other kind of element switch that just takes an on off switch um, instead of a preset. So what I got here is a message player. I'm just going to open this up. Now, don't worry too much about the message player and the event because I just got to set up an event for message playing um, and all that stuff. So we're all good to go there. This is just a way for me to actually set up the message player. So when I go back, remember my event management, I pull it up, and you can see that little message play chime that I set up in a message player is here as a separate event. So... Once again, I could do the same thing. Let me go to this one and this one. I will delete those events just to clean it up. Same thing. We're not doing third party logic, high, low or in. So when I push a button, I want to play a message. It's that simple. So it could be an emergency alert message. It could be a manual evac message or just a break message from a program timer from anything external. So what I'm going to do is say when I go low on control input one, which means when I close that circuit, I want to play a message and I just named it a chime tone and now when I go to mount this is where I'm actually going to say well what message do I want to play so I'm going to add all these messages let's pop them all up from here and I've got my let's do my three my three gong so that should do it and I will select it and close it out so there you go I mounted it to my message and it's just one event we're going to play it once okay 
So there we go. And in my message play, I said play it once. I could have it repeat several times or just keep going. And remember, I could if I, it was if it was say to play forever, I would have to put a second event to say stop event and then tell it to stop this event. So anyway, there we go. That's all in there, and we are ready to go. So now I need to compile. There we go. And the operation we will store this. Hardware boot. And away we go. So now, hopefully, I'll just bring this up so you can see the the output, which should be number one active. And I am now just going to, I will leave my cursor right here, and I am just going to short my contact wires on control input number one. And they're still shorted. As you can see, it only plays once. So I'll release the contact closure, and I'll close it again. Release, close it again. It's that easy. Well, congratulations. You just learned how to map your control inputs to change preset settings or to actually change any element setting within your design. Remember, if you have any other questions, please visit our website at www.penton.usa.com. Thank you, and have a great day.